Hey guys, it's Will here from Break Designs again, and here is another Illustrator tutorial. I haven't done the beginner's tutorial for a while because um, I need to think of a new strategy for that. But this is a tutorial about retro banners. Um, I wouldn't say it's like a ribbon, uh, but it is a banner and it gets a message across quickly. As you can see on my screen just here, I have got um, some retro text and retro banner, or I think it's vintage or whatever. I would say retro, but um, and it basically gives it an old style look. And I'm going to show you how to create this with an Illustrator right now. So stay tuned for this just now. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new artboard, which is basically me just creating a new document. So once we've created the new document or whatever, I'm just going to have a, keep referring back to this one. The first thing I did was I made a um, a rectangle like this. I pressed M and I got the rectangle. And then I changed the fill to the stroke, so I have no fill, but I had a stroke. And I did that by pressing Shift and X, and that switches these two around, or you can press this all uh, two arrow keys here. And then I put up the stroke to five, and that's what I got. I'm using a 500 by 500 artboard here at the moment, and I just got rid of my text thing there. So that's what I've done. I've got a five on there, I'm just going to bump it up a bit more. I'll do it to six. I used, I then selected it, and then I'm going to choose the align options to make sure it's aligned in the canvas, and that I'm on full screen by pressing Command and Zero or Control Zero on the PC. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to, as I, as you see here, I'm going to write text, and I'm just going to, let you press T, I'm going to say 13 pounds, like so. I'm going to press Command T to bring up my character settings here, and I'm just going to type in lobster because that's a really cool character that I like there. I'm just going to put that there. And I'm going to just have it like that. And this is the way that I've done it. So this is a cool uh, vintage retro text. Gives it sort of an old time look. Uh, and I've done. I just put it right there like that. This next thing I did is I add lines. As you can see here I've added lines uh, to it. And this is a big group so I'm just going to go ahead and ungroup that. So here I've just added lines uh, and you can actually um, incorporate them with the whole thing. We're just um, sort of uniting them together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create some lines just to separate them. And give it this isn't the best example I can give, but I'm just going to uh, create the line just like that. And the way that I did that was by pressing this key here, or going up to my uh, line segment tool, which is just here under the te uh, text tool. I'm just going to hold shift and press down and you'll see this sort of blue line that hasn't got a stroke or a fill in it so we need to make sure we're on a stroke and then bump up the fill and I'm going to bump it up to six just the exact same width as this one here so I've got that and then I'm gonna just press spoons I'm going to go spoons like so and then I'm going to change the text to tall dark and handsome which is the actual uh, font, it's not just me, it's, just, it's the actual font. And I'm going to bring it up, and this is a bold condensed font, which means that it condenses the text together. Uh, it means you can add more text, it just means a vertical axis is used and not the horizontal one if you're trying to fit a lot of information on. And then I'm going to actually outline this, and there's a couple ways you can do it. You can go to right click, create outlines, I think you can go to objects and then um, create outlines here somewhere or type yeah create outlines and type but I'm going to press command shift and zero sorry command shift and O uh, to create outlines just like that and it will create them uh, so this means it's a shape now it's not live editable text this means that I can um, I can align it perfectly within this square so I'm going to select both the square and the outline text and then I'm going to press the square again, and this will make it so it's a keychain object. So as you saw there, I'm just going to select them both, and then both the spoons, uh, text, and the square selected. I'm going to select the square again, and that means it's a key object. Uh, and this means that if I'm going to align something together, I'm going to align the spoons with this border here, with the one that is sort of dark blue. So to do it again, I'll show you, it's just to highlight it, them both or you can just press shift and highlight them and then I'm going to select the thing I want to align it to again and it will get this thick blue line 
Then up here in the top right, or for me down in the bottom right, uh, you're going to see these align options. I'm going to just align it to the vertical center. And that means that it's perfectly in line with the square and everything is all good with that. And then I'm going to select this object here, this line that we made, and I'm going to hold Alt, hold Shift, and then I'm going to move it to the right. And this means that I've made another border for the next scene to come. And then I'm going to just bring this over, so I'm going to press Alt and bring this over. That copies it. Change the text to 10 and PM. This I'm going to bring down uh, the character size down. You can do this by going over here, but I like to use key commands, so I'm going to press Command and Shift and the left sort of pointy bracket thing. I'm going to bring it right down about there. Then I'm going to press Command Enter to escape that. And then I can just edit it around here for a bit. So this is how I've done it. So edit it around like this. Maybe move that in a little bit. Maybe do that. You know, getting it all right, getting it all set for what I want it to look like. And that looks great. The next thing I want to do is I want to create. Now I've created this and it looks a bit different to this one. I must say this one looks pretty good because it's thicker. But I'm going to create these sort of indentations here in the stroke. And you can see it's just still one path. It hasn't been expanded at all, it's still one path. And that's because when you um, minus front in the Pathfinder options, which I will talk about in a new video, uh, which is down here in the Pathfinder options, if you go to minus front, the second option in to the right, um, on a stroke, if you do that on a stroke, it won't um, open the stroke. It will make sure it's closed, but it will circle it around. So it's sort of um, insecting it, if you want to speak like that, it's sort of insecting it from the object that you're using. So I'm going to go ahead, press L to get my ellipse tool, or I can just come up to my shapes, to my rectangle tool and go down to my lips. And then I'm going to go up to this anchor point here, making sure I'm on the anchor point. I'm going to click and then I'm going to hold Shift and Alt and drag out and that will um, create the ellipse from that centerpiece, so it's directly in the center there. And then I'm going to leave it to about there. I'm going to press Shift and X to make sure it's got a fill, no stroke. And I'm going to press Command and C to copy it. And I'll tell you that in a minute. Um, and then I'm going to just highlight both of these. So I've got my shape and my, um, so I've got my circle and my border. And then I'm going to go to my Pathfinder options, right one in, minus front. And that will minus the circle from the front, just like that. I'm going to actually edit that because I want to make this circle a tad bigger and then I'm going to do it again like so and that looks much better just there and then I'm going to press command and F and that will paste exactly where that circle was how I need to copy that circle again I'm going to command uh, I'm going to just minus front that again <coughs> excuse me and then I'm going to press command and F to paste it back in just like that and then I'm going to just copy this and press shift, making sure that it's intersected onto the right axis of this one. So over here, it's exactly in the same position, but on the opposite axis as this one. And then I'm going to highlight the stroke again and the circle. Do the same, minus front. And then I'm going to just do this again. I'm going to bring this down. Exactly repeat the process. Minus front. Now, if you do that, this is a crazy thing. Basically, you've um, minus fronted it, or you've used the cutout on the minus front uh, wrong because the circle was behind the um, the border. So what you need to do is make sure that the circle is above the border. So select the circle, right click and go to arrange, and then bring to front. And that will bring this circle to the front, so when you do it again, it will just be exactly how you want it. And then I'm just going to move this down, intersect it. I'm not going to copy it this time, I'm holding shift to make sure I get the exact measurements that I need. And then I'm going to right click, arrange, bring to front again, select them both, minus front. There we go. And then I'm going to highlight it all. If I don't want to edit it, I'll create them into outlines. I'll bring it up a bit and then press Command G to group it. 
and then you can copy this and put it into Photoshop as a smart object or a shape layer and that is basically it and that's how you create a retro sort of banner look and this would look really good in a YouTube thumbnail or it would look really good in a bottom part of a design that you're trying to create in a poster just to give it that extra oomph if you know what I mean. So.